Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a Bible art journaling challenge for you. I am going to show you how to paint a bridge with Inktense pencils today and I think that you will find this very easy to do. We're in Jeremiah chapter 51, some different verses there and I'm going to be using this photo. I've not shared about Paint My Photo before but it's a really great website that photographers can share their photos on and then painters can paint those photos and then you can just leave a link to where that photo is and I'm going to be doing that today and I've got a profile over there and I'd love you to come and hang out with me. I'm new to the website but the guy who runs it is great and just talking with him this week. Really good website and I'd encourage you to check it out if you're looking for images to do illustration in your Bible. It's a great option for you, I think. So here you can see I've just drawn a little bit of pigment using my Inktense pencil right onto the lines of my bridge which make up the railing on the sides. And I'm just going to continue to do that. If I feel that I've got a little extra color needed then I can just tap my damp brush right onto the tip of my pencil and use that. People ask me which techniques I use for adding color to my page and the answer is I use them all, whatever works. <laughs> so just get in there and have fun. It's really a bit like coloring. If you like colored pencils, I think Inktense pencils are even less scary than watercolor pencils because essentially as long as you get all of your pigment completely wet, when it dries then it will be permanent. So you can layer on top of it again and again and you won't have any trouble with it picking up and moving where you put it. So that's pretty handy. So you can see here that the top railing that I've added actually has the additional banister that you would lean on if you were leaning on the end or edge of the bridge. And it won't be that noticeable right now because this is my first color wash and I'll go back in later and add the detail there just a little bit and you can see that come to life at that point. Here you can see I'm just adding the slats that are on the bridge. This is actually a wooden bridge and it's interesting that the name of this photo on Paint My Photo is called Path to Peace, which I thought was kind of cool. And it just happened to be the image that I really liked the look of for doing this challenge. I want to see us stepping onto that bridge. and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So here, I just want to point out that when you are drawing, perspective is something that really at some point I'd love to do a tutorial specifically on what perspective is and how to get proper perspective. But essentially, let's pretend that the vanishing point is right in the middle of the bridge at the very back corner and everything disappears to that point on the horizon. And I'm making my slats look bigger and bigger as they get closer to me and smaller and smaller as they get further away from me and everything is kind of vanishing towards that point. The bridge isn't actually narrower further away from us and wider close to us. It's actually just the visual perspective that happens because things look like they're vanishing into a certain horizon point. So we are able to just trace that into place with this photo and then that helps us to be able to do what we're doing today. But you will notice that these particular pieces of wood that I'm putting in that support, those things will always be straight up and down. So make sure and paint those directly up and down and then you will have what looks like a bridge that is standing in the correct proportion and isn't toppling over or anything like that. And so now you can see I'm just putting the bulk of the bridge together. I'm showing that there is one particular line of this wood right here that is on the side of the bridge and is part of the inside railing. And then next you'll see me put another little line right next to it and that's actually still facing us but it's actually the side of that top piece. 
And as you watch me put it in, you'll notice how that actually looks visually. And hopefully that will make sense to you. I will put over on my blog the colors that I've used to the best of my ability. And hopefully all of that will make sense to you. But I really encourage you to just use whatever you want. This is a wooden bridge. I felt like using blue, so I did. That's the thing about being a creative person is you can just do whatever you feel suits your fancy at the time. So why am I drawing a bridge? The word bridge doesn't actually appear anywhere in scripture. I think God's doing something particularly special at the moment. You will have noticed if you've gone over to my blog recently that on Tuesday, I usually release a blog post and I include a challenge, which I've got today. And this is actually Tuesday's challenge a bit later because I got ready to release a challenge on Tuesday and really felt strongly that I needed to stop and do something entirely different. And this is the entirely different. But I have shared a word that I really felt like God had for a number of you. And I think from the outpouring of communication I've had that it has encouraged several of you, which I'm really glad about. And I want to talk to you a bit about that. But here, this is a mask pen. This is masking fluid in a fine tip applicator. And I am actually just putting it right where the glow of the sun is so that I can come back in a little bit and have that space completely white without worrying about coloring it. So I'm letting it dry and getting on with other stuff. The important thing with masking fluid is that you just don't move it while it's drying because it will really gum up your surface. And I find that it's really important that you don't accidentally heat it up. So you'll see me get my heat gun close to it, but I'm definitely not blowing any heat near it because that will kind of help it stick to your surface and that wouldn't be a good thing. So I'm just putting in some color and letting that completely dry. It will kind of go a translucent color when it is ready to be colored near. If you're not familiar with what masking fluid is, it's essentially something that just dries just gummy enough to stick to your surface so that you can color all around it and it protects it from actually ending up being colored. And then you can just roll your finger across it and it will slide straight off. And then you can proceed to go ahead and color that space or leave it white as you want, which is really great. I have had a particular amount of trouble with the masking fluids that I've tried. And this one is awesome. I love it because it's in a fine tip applicator already for me to use. And you can see it's changed color a little bit. And so it's ready for me to be able to color near it. And I can go straight over it and it's not going to let any of my little glow area of the sun become colored. And then later I will go in and soften the edges with my brush once I've taken it off because there's a harsh, ed harsh edge there right now, but it will be great later on. So honestly, for me, masking fluid is something that is really wonderful to use, but it can be a bit of a pain if you are using the wrong system. And for me, having it already in a bottle like this and able to do little fine tip stuff. It means that I can write with it. I can do all sorts of things and I'm not going to have it gumming up a brush and that sort of thing. I know that some people put hand soap or dish soap onto the bristles of a brush. You definitely don't want to use it on one of your nice brushes. It will ruin it, whatever you put on it, but you can put some dish soap onto it first before dipping it into your masking fluid and that will help it to not stick to your masking fluid. But I personally just have pretty much retired all my other masking fluids and will just use this. And here you can see me rolling it off and it just comes straight off. It will slightly try and pull some of the black pigment from your text, but it hasn't been enough for me to feel like it's a problem. But I wouldn't leave it on there for any extended amount of time. It was on there for a, an hour or so. As long as you don't close your Bible in the middle of working on it, you could probably leave this on overnight and then that would be about the extent of what you'd want to do. I need to point out that I did actually gesso my page. I've shown you that so many times. I don't want to waste your time showing you again, but you will be able to see other videos that I'll link at the end, which will show you how I've done that with some Art Basics Clear Gesso. And I just want to point out to you, as you can see here, 
there looks to be a large concentration of gray color going on there in that little spot there and I'll flip the page and show you what it looks like and that's actually a spot where I missed the gesso and it bled through and it really isn't that big of a deal to me but um, if you do like there to not be a problem actually the way you can fix that is making sure to do two layers of gesso which I forgot to do on my left page today and I really noticed a difference on my right page versus my left page. So it's really important. Do those two layers of page preparation if you don't want any bleed through and it will really pay dividends in your end result if that's something that's important to you. If it's not important to you like it wasn't to me, then that's fine too. Before I share with you about the scripture and the word that I've had, I just wanna say that with the clouds, you'll notice that wherever the sun is, I'm trying to make the shadow be on the other side of the cloud. So towards the left, you'll see that it's as far away on that left-hand side of the clouds. And I'll add darker and darker colors in and they will go towards the left. And I've tried to basically make those shadows be on the outside away from the sun. And I've chosen a few different colors that I'm interested in working with and just scratched them onto a piece of paper for me and that's helped me to decide which colors I definitely want to use today. I haven't done any swatches of ink tense pencils yet because I've just recently gotten this 72 set which I absolutely love and can't recommend it enough. It's actually one of my favorite art supplies. So I think they work really well in Bible pages and it's definitely something I reach for a lot. But today um, I just want to encourage you to get whatever you've got in front of you and use it and have fun with it. It's just about being in God's presence. As usual, I really want to encourage you with that. Don't be hung up by trying to get things perfect or trying to do what I'm doing. Figure out what is speaking to you and do something that is going to minister to you and get you in the word and spending time with God. That's what this is about. And it's definitely not about anyone else's journey. It's about yours and your time with God. So let's talk about this verse and about why I've done what I've done here. On Tuesday, I released a blog post, which I am going to link to, and I really am asking you to please go and watch it. If you have any need for breakthrough in your life in any area right now, please go and be encouraged by it. I really believe that there is a key breakthrough available, and I am talking to you about some steps that you can take to step into that, because I really feel like God's doing some great things at the moment and releasing some really good things right now. And I am aware that there are a number of people struggling with depression, isolation, creative blocks, other struggles that are keeping you from pursuing creative giftings and call on your life. And if that's you, then I really want to encourage you to go and have a look at that. And I am just going to share a bit here and say that I am speaking out against those things. And I'm speaking to those of you who are struggling and telling you that you matter. You are not alone. God sets the lonely in a family. And I have groups full of family to you. God has incredible creative inspiration ready for you. And he is not the author of sickness. He gives good gifts to his children and you are his child. So I'm silencing those lies and I encourage you to step into greater freedom in your life. And I went on to share about a particular word that I shared a few days earlier where I saw a bridge that was being transported down the motorway. And I live in England, so we call them motorways instead of freeways. And as I saw it, I felt like God said that he's giving people a bridge to walk over in this season. And he's even bringing the bridge to you. So I'm asking people to step over the line and step up. Just stand up wherever you are if you need breakthrough and actually step over an imaginary line in your room and just say, okay, God, I receive what you have for me. I am stepping into a new season. So step over that line, thank him for coming, welcome him in your atmosphere, and then step over that line. So I've created the line at the beginning of the bridge here, and I am making it green for saying go, and I am just encouraging all of us to step into that place of breakthrough. For each one of us, it's going to look different. Whatever it is that you need to reach God on, 
reach out to him. I want to remind you to make sure and head over to my blog, which is where I always share a lot more. And this week, I'm going to actually not give you the verse on this video. I am going to encourage you to go over to my blog post in order to see it, because there's a few different sections of scripture in Jeremiah chapter 51 that I'm referring to. And I want to make sure and share that with you in context and direct you to the word that I shared so that all of this can make sense as a whole to you and be of encouragement to you within its context. So this challenge that I've been on for over half a year now is that I create and then I encourage you to create on the scripture that I create on in the way that it speaks to you or the way I have done. And I'm going to link to all of that over my blog and ask you to join me on Facebook group, community, Google Plus community, and I hope you will. So on screen right now are a couple of other challenge videos that I've done. On the left is one and then on the right is another. And these are similar things that may be of interest to you. So do check those out as well if you'd like to. And I will see you guys very soon.